Morning Martin, you don't uh, normally do your vlog in a yellow t-shirt, <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think you need to explain why. why, why yeah, I probably ought to explain really why I'm, why I'm sitting in Miss Crufts. Um, we had a really nice suggestion made to us this week by uh, a parent on behalf of a number of our students that we, with, uh, with everything that's been in the news recently, um, we thought, we, they, they suggested we might find a way of, of showing our support for the people of, of the Ukraine. Um, I have to stress at this point that this is this is not a political statement from us. Uh, it's very much a gesture, a, a humanitarian gesture, actually, in support of the people of Ukraine. So, um, yeah, and specifically those who are being displaced by, by the war. Yeah. Absolutely. So, our students are concerned by what's going on. Um, we've given them plenty of opportunity to talk about this week, and today we've decided to. It, it, it's quite an easy way, really. We've we've decided to do a month today. We've encouraged staff and students to wear blue and yellow if they wanted to, um, and we're just going to put the money that's raised today straight to the Red Cross, who are in charge of the humanitarian support. So that's why I'm dressed as I am. Uh, it, it's nice when the students and the parents feel they can make suggestions like that that we can quite easily put into practice. But yeah, I'll just stress one more time: it's, it's in no way is it any kind of political gesture. And it's lovely seeing the whole school come together because even the day before this week we had World Book Day and, and students. Oh and, God! And I walked teachers. into all sorts yesterday. I've got <laughs> I've got where's I've got the heads of year dressed as where's Wally. I've got the English department dressed as well. I'm assuming it was something Dickensian. Um, I walked into I didn't know what. Yeah, so it was nice. Uh, and although I think from a student point of view it's very much something that the primary schools get involved in, it was nice to see a number of our students feeling that, that that they could get involved in that as well and wearing various costumes. So yeah, it's nice. And of course, the underlying thing about that is it encourages people to read because reading in reading socially, not not for for schoolwork, is, is a big boon and a big benefit. To... Yeah, we've come a long way in, in times of uh, trying to develop a, a reading culture. Um, it's work that Mr. Goodman's led actually over the last couple of years. It's, it's been a superb piece of work. We we're just trying to make sure that that the the the, the culture of reading is is something that that's happening within lessons within tutor time. Um, in order to try and encourage the students to be doing outside school as well. Talking of outside school, planning permission has gone in for uh, for our fence or for the for the um, extension of the fence, isn't it? Really, because there is a fence around the school yeah. property, but it's, this is a, a sort of um, something that's been going on for a while. We've had consultation with the local community. Where, where's that standing now? Well, do you know what? I, I, I'm I'm almost I'm kind of loath to get involved with it. Um, f from a head teacher's point of view, it it begins and ends with one word. This it's safeguarding. Mm -hmm. Um, we we are wide open as a site. Um, I, was, I was quite unhappy with some of the publicity we had recently in in the local press because I thought some of that was unfair. Um, we 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 are wide open as a site, and potentially potentially that means that it, it could be unsafe. We could be vulnerable to people coming in from the outside. Um, so we're probably the last school in the country. Uh, not to be surrounded by some kind of perimeter fence. Um, when I arrived here nearly three years ago now, I couldn't believe how open we were. Um, so it's long overdue. I, I, I'm not trying to make things difficult for the local residents. I've got no interest in doing that. We pride ourselves as being a school that's very much part of its community. Um, but I think in, in terms of protecting and ensuring the safety and well-being of our students and staff, um, we, we need some kind of protection. So really not trying to court controversy at all, just trying to keep people safe. And, and that's all I'm interested in. Um, what we do need um, in order to get the planning permission through is we need the support of staff, students and parents. So alongside this video, it will always go out within a school comms message. Within that school, school comms message, there'll be a link that's provided. And I would just ask, as many of you as possible, please, just to add your names to that, and to, to supporting. Um, we're not supporting something that's going to make things difficult for the local residents. We're, I'm asking you to, to support something that will, will help us keep your students safe. That's it. Brilliant. So that sits with planning at the moment. Uh, another issue that you've had to deal with this week is having a rug pulled under you uh, by, by the government in terms of examinations for year 11 yeah we, we we dealt with this with the year 11 students and parents that were affected but i i think this is just an opportunity for me to say thank you um we we've uh, we, we we've changed the timetables of some year 11 students in response to a 
a, a last minute announcement from the government about, about how, how the results were going to count for us in the summer. Um, and as usual, the, the students and the parents have just been fantastic uh, in, in the support that they've offered us. Um, but, but again, I feel like I'm singling out a few people today. Mr. Boys as deputy head, Mr. Mitchell as head of year 11. I mean, what a job they're doing. Um, in order to do something like this in March, when the exams are coming up in May, you've got to, you've got to win the hearts and minds. And I can't really think of many people throughout my career that do that any better than Mr. Mitchell does. Brilliant, excellent. And we, we normally talk about COVID in these vlogs. We talk about it less and less, which is good. Yeah. And there's a couple of instances this week of... of, of uh, of being able to sort of move out of that COVID bubble, that the, um, the drama group put on a, a, a performance to a live audience, the, the National Theatre's Connections preview, and the music group are appearing at uh, Plymouth University tonight, Friday night. Fantastic, yeah, and it's great to see the sport back on the agenda as well. Uh, we've had a number of fixtures. I think the Year 11s won a basketball uh, table tennis tournament yesterday. But to get the drama and the music departments back to doing what they do best, because their work extends so far beyond the school day, um, that's just brilliant to see. Uh, we've got high school musical coming up as well in the summer. But yeah, to get, their, to get the drama department and the music department back doing things outside of school, actually that feels like a big thing for me. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted that that's happening. It's also been nice uh, to... You know, to have a, a slightly more relaxed approach around the wearing of masks in school. We've still got a number of students and staff who are choosing to wear them. Um, but uh, I've been able to get back to telling students to tuck the shirts in rather than put the masks on, which is always always nice. For you, maybe. Maybe, maybe not for them. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you.